Hey, Tubies. It's Psychic Bob. Well, it is so rocking to be back with you. Well, I want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who came up to yesterday's video. We had such a good time. We had messages from the spirit world. And if you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's in the queue right before this video. And in that video, I did little mini psychic readings for, for people that wrote in. If you want to get in on that, check out that video. It tells how you can do that. Well, you guys are the best. Thanks for being here. I'm feeling a lot better today. You know, yesterday I was so tired because I had to get up at like 4 in the morning and then I traveled all the way home from mom's. Then I had a full day of psychic readings at the office and then it was time for messages. By the time I got to messages, I was fried out. <laughs> so I was a little zoned out. A few of you wrote that I, I said, I'll see you tomorrow for Wicked Wednesday instead of saying Wiccan Wednesday. And somebody wrote, Bob, we know you're tired because you call Wednesday Wicked Wednesday with an E-D. And I said, Wicked. I said, oh my gosh, did I? <laughs> I probably did. Anyways, thanks for pointing it out. I was tired. I don't think Wicked Wednesday is at all wicked, though. Anyways, I'm glad you guys are here. And, um, you know, today I just want to do a little bit of talk about witchcraft, uh, different types, because as many of you know, I've really in the last few months been drawn to being a sea witch. Well, actually, I've been interested in being a sea witch for a long time. But as I've had a lot more access to the beach and I've been staying at a beach, um, you know, I've really been spending a lot of time doing that and focusing on it. And some of you wrote to me and said, Say Bob, we didn't even know there was such a thing as a sea witch or sea witchcraft. We didn't even know there's different types of Wicca. Well, actually there is. There are a lot of different ways to be a Wiccan. And in fact, in my book, Psychic Bob's Book of Wiccan Wisdom, which you can get over at my website at robert-hickman.com. I'll have the link below. Um, it talks about some of the different types you could explore to be a Wiccan. So let's take a look at that. Here in my book on page 94, uh, I've done a little chart that breaks down different types of witchcraft and gives little definitions. This is under the section called, What Type of Witch Are You? Now, throughout this book, I've put little artworks, and you can see here, here's a fun little picture I made called Elixirs. And I draw, drew this and uh, put it in the book. And uh, there's a little witch there. She's got her pentacle hanging on the wall. She's in front of a window, and you can see the stars and the moon outside. She's got a little table here uh, set with different little crystal bottles with gem, gemstone elixirs and herbal elixirs. And, I just thought that was kind of cool. So I drew that and I put it in here. So let's take a look at, at what it says here. So the section we're going to read today is taken from my book, Psyche Bob's Book of Wiccan Wisdom. There's my name, Bob Hickman. And this is on page 94 of the book. And it's, what type of witch are you? And you'll notice I did a little chart here that breaks down different types of witchcraft. Now this is by no means exhaustive. It's only one uh, little interpretation. There's a lot more, but this will give you some flavors of Wicca that you can explore. And uh, throughout this book, I did little art drawings. This is a picture that I created. Uh, this is a witch. The title of this picture is called Elixirs. And you can see a, a young girl. She's a witch with her hair flowing down her back, tied in a little bow. On her wall is her little pentacle hung. And she's in front of a table here that sits in front of a window. And out the window, you can see the moon and the stars. And here on the table, she has little bottles of elixirs, little herbal mixtures and gemstone elixirs and magic potions. And uh, anyways, I thought you guys would enjoy seeing this. So let's go ahead and read, what type of witch are you? What type of witch are you? No matter when you take up Wicca, at some point, you will find yourself wondering just what your path is. There is no one right way to be a witch. Some paths you might explore include the following. Green witch. Now here's the chart. So I define green witch and then we're going to give the definition. Okay. Green witch. This path focuses on herbal magics and woodland rituals, often including fairy belief also called Kitchen Witch and Hedge Witch. The next type is Sea Witch. And that's the one I'm really drawn to right now. 
A sea witch is in love with the ocean and the beach, working with the energy of the tides and sea elements such as salt, shells, and driftwood. This is a nature-centric path. Now, I'm going to pause there for a second because I want to comment on this. You know, it's really true about sea witch, witchcraft. As many of you know, I've made many wands out of driftwood. And driftwood is really kind of one of the main tools. Driftwood wands, is a, it's a main tool of a sea witch. But uh, I do work with salt, particularly sea salt. And I've worked with shells. So there's a lot here to work with, okay? All right, let's move on. Next type of witch is an animal whisperer witch. Animal whispers focus their craft on the healing of the bodies, minds, and spirits of animals. Most have a pet familiar and totem animal spirit who guide them in their work. All right, so that's another type. Another type of witch is the eclectic witch. Eclectic witches blend many different Wiccan slash pagan traditions, as well as incorporate aspects of other religious paths to work their magic. A liberal, all-encompassing path that seeks to embrace the common elements in all faiths. I'd say I'm definitely an eclectic witch too. So I'm an eclectic witch leaning towards a sea witch. And you can be multiple of these. So don't feel you have to limit yourself to one. Okay, uh, another type of witch, Celtic witch. Drawing from the spiritual truths of ancient Ireland and the British Isles, this path reveres the ancient Celtic gods and fairies. Elements such as Arthurian legend can be found here also, such as invocations to Merlin and Morgan Le Fay. Now, these, as I said, are very, just very brief descriptions. Uh, doesn't really cover the full thing, but it's just to give you the idea to get you started to research that you could be uh, any type of witch that you want. So if you're interested in this, definitely check out my book, Psychic Bob's Book of Wiccan Wisdom. And you can get that over at my website. I have a store there, robert-heckman.com. Again, it'll be in the info box below this video. Well, many of you have been writing to me, asking me, you know, a little bit, tell, talk a little bit more about sea witchcraft. And we're going to definitely be doing that in the next few weeks. I'll be going back to mom, so you'll see me there again. Uh, but one of the things that I love to do to incorporate my sea witch magic is to empower jewelry and charms. So I have a number of pieces of sea witch jewelry that I wear that are specially consecrated to the ancient sea goddess. So I thought I'd give you a little jewelry tour and this might give you some ideas for bringing some of that oceanic magic into your lives. By the way, last week I talked about how to scry with a fishing float. And as many of you know, I said in that video that many of the witches in seaport towns in the old days couldn't afford fine crystal balls like a lot of us have today. And they would use these old glass fishing floats that were tied onto nets to keep them afloat. If you didn't see that, check out last week's Wiccan Wednesday because we talked about working with this. But I wanted to show you this today to show you another little treasure that I got recently. Um, if you buy a fishing float and you can't find a stand to go with, sometimes they sell them with a stand. People put them in their house for decoration. Um, if you can't find a stand with it, you know, you, the crystal ball stands are kind of expensive. You might want to go to a local store, shopping store sells dining room supplies like Pier One or, you know, Bloomingdale's. But I bought uh, a set of these. These are napkin ring holders. And you'll find a lot of napkin ring holders are wide and, and, you know, just the right size to be a stand to hold fishing floats. So this is a, a little silver plated um, napkin ring holder from Pier 1. And as you can see, I can put my crystal or my fishing float ball, my scrying ball on that. It's the perfect stand. So that's a, a something you might want to explore, getting a napkin ring uh, to hold your scrying device, okay? Well, let's look at uh, some of my sea witch jewelry. Uh, today I've been wearing this pendant. This is something I just got before I came back from mom's uh, the other day. This is something I've been wanting for a long time. It's a cowrie shell. 
And for those of you who practice Santeria or Voudon, you recognize these. These shells are, many of them are found throughout the Caribbean islands, but they're little tiny seashells um, and they're just beautiful. They're natural and they're natural color. They're purple and brown. And you know, I love purple and they're kind of a brownish purple tan color. And uh, this one has been dipped in silver. A lot of times what people do is they'll take them and they'll dip them. If you see the edges of this, it's dipped in silver and then it's got a little bail attached. But uh, this uh, little cowrie shell is a wonderful, magical tool. The cowries were considered, um, well, they were in the old days, they were actually forms of monetary payment. Uh, they were used as trade, like as money. So people would trade these shells and use them as currency. So uh, that's um, really interesting. So the cowrie shell can be used in magic to represent wealth and prosperity. It also is used in divination because the shells in, in the the Caribbean magical traditions are oftentimes tossed, they're shook up and tossed on the ground and then the patterns are read. Some are the rune stones. So they're considered the mouthpiece of the gods. So it's like a mouth talking to you. But uh, I think they're just beautiful. You notice it's kind of hard to see on camera here, but the beautiful purple color, just lovely. So if you want to do sea witch magic, you're looking for a symbol you could wear, that will bring you blessing, power, and protection, connection with the goddess, cowrie shell might be something you want to explore. And they dip these in silver and in gold. Um, I'm looking for a gold one right now because I, I love them too, but I didn't find one, but I did get one in silver. So you might want to explore the cowrie shell. Seashells, you can usually get these at uh, beachside towns, a lot of stores. Some. This is a pendant. It's actually an abalone shell or abalone. I don't know how it's pronounced. It says abalone. But this is beautiful. It's got an interior that's beautiful, shining mother of pearl. And, uh, you know, you can see it, it also has been dipped in silver. So they dip these shells in silver. So the edges are silver. And then that back little line is silver that's been dipped and applied. And this is just a lovely shell. Now, if you have one of these type of shells, the seashell pendant, you can use this as a magical item because the seashell can be used in two different ways. Uh, one of them is as a shield. So you could hang this, when you hang this on your pendant, if you wear it with the back side of the shell facing, which would be the outer surface, then this serves as a shield for you and it's defensive. It prevents people from sending negative energy your way or attacks. And so you can consecrate it as a shield of protection. Now, if you're in a place in your life where you're trying to draw opportunities to you, like such as a new job or money, then you could turn it over and wear it this way with the, the inner side, the concave side showing. Um, you can wear it, and if you wear it this way, this is like a receptive gesture. And it's like saying, I'm open to receiving the bounty and blessings of the universe. So whether you wear it this way to receive or this way as defense, seashells have been a traditional tool of sea witches and sea witch magic. So there you go, there's another shell. Now, um, if you can't find real shells, and sometimes they're hard to get, or at least in a good price range, you might wanna explore small silver charms as well that are copies of originals. Now, this is a little sand dollar done in sterling silver. And the sand dollar is often used by witches, sea witches particularly, as a pentacle. So you could wear that as a sign of protection or drawing prosperity or blessing to you. And uh, it has the five-pointed star on it. Speaking of stars, uh, as I mentioned before, I also have these beautiful sterling silver starfish pendants. And the star is traditionally a sign of Wicca. And if you're in a place where you can't openly wear a pentacle, you could wear a little starfish pendant. Just look up starfish charm, silver starfish charms or sterling silver starfish charms. And they have these in all different shapes and sizes and designs. But the starfish is the pentagram, which is a sign of protection. And you can consecrate it to be the ancient pentagram, a uh, sign of protection, okay? Now, Speaking of the life of the sea, one of my favorite, favorite types of jewelry that I'm obsessed with are fish pendants. And here are some of my 
collection of wonderful fish pendants. This one's done in gold, and it's a reticu articulated pin. It means that it moves. See how it swims? It's jointed like an actual fish, and it flops back and forth. Isn't that great? And this one, let's see if I can get out of light. It's hard to see here. It has little emerald eyes in it. It's golden with emerald eyes. Now, I don't think it's solid gold. I think it's gold-plated. Uh, but it comes on a little bale, and you wear it like a pendant, and it just hangs down. And it sparkles and it flops. It's a really lovely piece. So um, you might want to get an articulated fish pendant. Now, they also have, I have one done in silver here as well. This one has ruby eyes on it. And it's done in silver, and as you see, it wiggles like a fish and flops. Isn't that great? That little fish tail. I love these because when you wear them, they sparkle and they swing around. People really love these pendants when I wear them. I get a lot of compliments. Um, and then another one of my pendants is another articulated fish. This one is done in cloisonné. Cloisonné is a, a type of enamel work where they use copper and then they overlay it with gold and then enamel. They're very beautiful. These are a little pricey, I'll be honest with you. They're not the cheapest. They used to be cheaper. You used to see these a lot back in the 1970s. But nowadays, they're, they're a lot rarer and they're more expensive. But if you like enamel, uh, you know, these are definitely worth it because they're just beautiful. It's not photographing as well as it is, but, you, you know, you can get a little bit of a sense here. Sometimes this camera, it's hard to film small items. But hopefully you can get a little sense of that beautiful enamel and gold. It just really shines. Now here's one of my favorite pieces of jewelry. Many of you have seen me wear this before. This is my sterling pentacle. And it has an actual moonstone set in it, rainbow moonstone. And uh, the moon is, is very much associated with the sea goddess, the tides and the moon. So moonstones are a gemstone that you could also wear as a sign of connection to sea magic. Uh, in addition, that I also have, I just found this. I thought I lost it and I found it recently. I have this tiny, tiny little pentacle. It's done in sterling silver. Now I say, well, gee, Bob, it's just a pinnacle. What's that mean? Well, look what, what's interesting. Back when I bought this, I didn't know. I bought it just because it was a little silver tiny pinnacle. But when I got it home, I flipped it over. This needs polish, by the way. It's a little tarnished. And do you recognize that blue triangle? Can you guys see that? That blue triangle is the sign of water. So this would be a sea witch pinnacle because it means working with the element of water. That's the elemental symbol of water, the inverted blue triangle. So there you go. So I've got a little blue inverted triangle. Um, that's a Wiccan element, elemental power. Now, speaking of the elemental powers, you know the sea, whenever its tides come in and out, offer treasures. And here are some of my newest treasures. I just got these recently. I've never owned pearls before, but if you want, you could think about wearing pearls as a also a connection to the sea gods. This is my beautiful golden pearl here. Let me just slide over so you can see it. Um, but this is a beautiful golden pearl. I wore this last week in a video. I just got this like two weeks ago, and uh, I just love it. And uh, the you know there are a lot of golden pearls now coming out of Thailand and Burma. And so if you're lucky enough to find a golden pearl, they are rarer than most pearls, I would recommend you get one. Another type of pearl is the black pearl. And here's a wonderful black pearl that I have. And uh, these come from Tahiti. This is a Tahitian black pearl. And they're very mystical and powerful. So I got my little pearls. I've been storing them here in this little box. This is a little Limoges porcelain box that I have. I love, I used to collect little porcelain boxes and it's like a little seashell, like an oyster shell or a clam shell. It's made of fine porcelain from France. Anyways, it's a great, it's great for storing, my, oops, that's closed. Well, I won't open it. It's great for storing pearls. Now, another piece of sea witch jewelry that no sea witch should be without is aquamarine. These two stones here are part of my aquamarine gem collection. These are real aquamarines. They're quite large and they're not cheap. Aquamarine is one of the more expensive gemstones. Uh, but if you buy it in its tumbled form, it's a little more affordable. 
but uh, these have a beautiful kind of a bluish green color. This one has a little bit of a bluer color, and this stone has a little bit, if you can see it on film, a little more of a greener tint to it. But I just love aquamarine, and this is great to draw in the energy of the sea and the sea goddess. And it's a wonderful stone for channeling. While I was at the beach last week, I also bought this little ring. Check this out. This is a little agate ring set in silver, and it's a blue agate. Agate's a wonderful stone. It's traditionally a witch stone agate. And if you can find it in a blue or green or blue gray, this one's like a blue gray. Let's see if I can get our light a little bit. This blue gray color is wonderful. It looks like the sea on a kind of a cloudy day. This is my new sea witch ring. So uh, I love, in fact, I'll put it on here for you so you can see it. All right, there it is. It's quite a large stone, but it's on my hand. You can see it. Isn't that beautiful? Just a beautiful ring. So that's my, my new sea witch agate. And as I said, agates are traditionally a witch stone. A lot of witches work with it. And another stone that a lot of people overlook, quartz crystals, particularly Lemuria. Now this is a Lemurian quartz crystal. Lemurian quartz crystals, many of them are found near the seashore at beaches, down in the sand. Um, and so they're associated also with the ocean. The Lemurians were connected to the sea and sea life and sea power. So Lemurian quartz crystals are also a form of magical crystals. So there you go. So there you go, guys. There's a little bit of my sea witch jewelry. I hope you've enjoyed this today. It's giving you some ideas a little bit more about being a sea witch. Or maybe you want to be a different type of witch. As we talked about in my book, Psychic Bob's Book of Wick and Wisdom, there are a lot of ways to be a witch. So I hope that you'll, uh, you know, you'll explore them. Get my book over at my website, uh, robert-hickman.com. Again, the link will be below. And, uh, you know, study it. Learn about the craft. I've enjoyed being with, with you guys today. I hope you've enjoyed this as well. Keep it here. We got more coming. Uh, tomorrow is Thursday. That's Vlog Thursday. So we're going to go somewhere. I don't know what we're doing yet, but just be here. We're going to make it fun. I want to say thank you for being here. I love you guys. Mwah. Listen, help me out. Like this video, favorite it, share it with your friends. Hit subscribe, be part of our channel. Thumbs up. And, uh, you know, tell me in the box below, uh, do you have a favorite piece of jewelry? Maybe you have a favorite piece of sea witch jewelry. What do you think about aquamarine? Have you ever worn an agate? Tell me about your magical jewelry pieces. I want to hear about them below. Well, guys, thanks for being here. I love you. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Um, and until then, may you always blessed be.